Thank you. Sorry, I'm sitting down because my age <laughs> means that I can't read anymore without the light. Okay, so we started off with a nice provocation by Tim, who was chairing, uh, who reminded us basically we are here um, dealing with social change, and the question is, what is good practice from the university's perspective, and what are we doing? What what more can we do? Uh, we had four contributions, two from Cape Town, one from Manchester, and one from Stockholm. In terms of the common or different threads, I'm not sure I solved the common or different, but I'll list them for you. Uh, we talked about boundary crossings, multiple boundary crossings. We talked extensively about learning and different types of learning that are occurring. Um, about the other products that universities can facilitate. And finally, quite a long list of challenges. In terms of top takeaways, let's see if I can do justice to all this. Um, boundary crossings, main takeaway message, it's complicated. There are more than two boundaries that are crossed at every one time. So it's not only about universities and cities, um, but the nature of the boundaries is in itself a question. Are they that solid? Do we have flexibilities? Are they porous? But certainly we need to differentiate between boundaries of cultures of work, between people and the organizations they work from, between me, myself and I, so the self and what we learn, and between us when we become experts in co-production and we become an entity and everybody else there. So do we actually create boundaries is I guess the question. Second, um, I'm gonna say something about what we produce. So universities can produce lots of things. They can produce policy briefs. They can and do produce lots of academic things, papers, books, etc. But they also produce or can produce through these processes networks um, and they obviously therefore bring people together. How much this is valued is yet another question. And then they can produce or can facilitate neutral spaces by which we enable then, uh, well, the, the language that was used was whether we can <coughs> discuss productively or include and, and uh, promote productive tension in the debates. Can these spaces be built? Can universities facilitate these? And the, it seems that uh, the experience is yes. Um, we can build trust through these processes uh, and we can help speed up the process of change. I'm running out of time, am I? Learning, yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> okay, okay, learning. Learning um, was another major topic. Um, my takeaway of the, from this is, I'll give you the summary, is people do learn, but do universities learn? This is a little bit the question that I think is the, the bit of the elephant in the room. But the discussion was that universities can promote um, enhan enhanced capabilities in terms of helping to conceptualize, which I guess is what we're supposed to be good at, but also uh, there was a lot of reflection on how they help self-awareness and facilitate self-awareness. How close are you? Oh my God. So that leads me to, if we do all this, um, what is it that universities don't do? There's lots of challenges, I'll just say, quote one. We do a lot in spite of our institution. I thought that was a pretty damning s summary. So there's lots that needs to be done. And there's a list of challenges that I will send you by email. <laughs> but you can imagine what they are. Thank you.